All right, let's go into the mailbag. YouTube comments or X, formerly known as Twitter, if you want priority access and all sorts of other perks. Go join the flock over at Subtext, that link in the description below, wherever you, li- wherever you listen to or watch this show. Free 14-day trial, then it's just $5 a month. You get all sorts of other perks, like a chance to talk with me one-on-one far more often than people on social media do. So this question came in via the Twitter direct mentions from Peyton. Could Evan Stewart win the Boletnikov, the award given to the best wide receiver in all of college football? No, I don't think he can. Does that mean he can be the best wide receiver in college football? Yes. I think he has that sort of ceiling. This is a guy who in his first two years at Texas A&M is yet to amass a thousand yard season. Why? Because they were constantly changing offensive coordinators. They were constantly changing quarterbacks and their head coach was using an offensive philosophy that hasn't worked in a decade. It wasn't good. They made a change. They paid Jimbo Fisher $75 million to go away little technical snafu there, but I don't even think I could spend $75 million. Now that gets taxed. So that'd actually be like 37 and a half. I could probably spend that over a long period of time. 75? No, no. If you give me $75 million untaxed, I would struggle to, I'd I'd be set for life and I would still do the show because I appreciate it all very much. But the reason I say Evan Stewart can't win the Boletnikoff is we just saw the best individual receiver season in the history of Oregon football. Troy Franklin tied the single season record for receptions, which Tez Johnson then broke by playing in the Fiesta Bowl, and he set the single season record for touchdowns and yards. He was not a finest finalist for the Boletnikov. Like it's it's clearly hard. Maybe there just has to be more of a brand built up at that position. Maybe you Oregon just has to have more seasons where guys have a thousand yards or more and you know ten plus touchdowns. I don't know. But here's the thing. There are a lot of talented receivers in college football. It is a scorching hot position for talent at the high school, college, and NFL ranks. It's a big time position. Colin Coward used to describe them as the icing on the cake. They're the cake now. Quarterback, receiver, left tackle. Those are the most important, most well-paid positions along with edge rusher in the NFL. So that's where you see a lot of high-level talent coming in and being developed in college. So I think that for, for Evan Stewart, he's going to, in all likelihood, have his best season because I think he puts up a thousand yards this year. The question is how high over does he go? Because to be a, a Boletnikoff award winner, you, you have to have, you know, at least 14, 15 touchdowns. You got to have at least 1300 yards. And even that is not a guarantee. And there's a, you know, subjective nature to it. I mean, Marvin Harrison Jr. last year won the award before the season even started. Like that award, I think Marvin Harrison Jr. is great and he's a top tier NFL prospect. That award was given to him before the season began and he's outstanding. I didn't have a problem with him being a finalist, but I say this because I'm being honest as an Oregon fan, Roma Dunze was more deserving to win the Boletnikoff. He just was. Malik Neighbors was probably more deserving to win the Boletnikoff at LSU but it went to Marvin Harrison Jr. So the narrative for some of these awards can be a really, really big factor. And Evan Stewart looking to have a breakout year, I just don't think that that's something that can really come to fruition. And I don't think Oregon needs it to. I think it's an interesting thought because he's talented enough to win that award. I I just don't know. If you think back to when LaMichael won the Doak Walker Award or when Mariota won the Heisman, they had one or two years of establishing themselves in college football, playing in front of voters, playing nationally televised games, putting up great numbers going into a season where you have that high expectation. Oregon fans have high expectations. I know what he's capable of. Is he generating that level of buzz? No. So he he would have to go bonkers. And I think Oregon's receiving core is too deep. And that's a good problem to have. For him to win that award, he'd probably have to be 1,500 plus yards, beat Troy Franklin's record last year, and you know 15 or more touchdowns. I don't think he's going to do that. Why? Because Oregon's receiving core is sick. I, I saw, I, I mean, there have been a bunch of Twitter accounts and opinion hosts and all sorts of people that are saying Oregon's got the best receiving core in the country. I tend to agree. I, I don't know of one. Certainly, and there aren't any in the Big Ten that are as as good as Oregon. Like, I think USC's is good. It's not as good as Oregon's. I, I wholeheartedly do not believe that. I think Zachariah Branch at USC would start in Oregon's receiving lineup. Nobody else would. 
Evan Stewart, Tez, that's as good a one-two tandem as you're going to find in all of college football. So no, I don't think he can win the Bletnikoff, but no, I don't think it's a problem. Uh, it's just kind of the the reality. Like Mariota had those two years where Oregon was winning a bunch of games and he was really good. And then he won the Heisman. He wasn't a finalist the previous two years. And LaMichael had that true freshman season. He was really good that year. Don't think he won the Doak Walker Award, but he won it in 2010 and he was a Heisman finalist then. Why? He had a season to show everybody what he was capable of. Evan Stewart could do it if he comes back for a senior season. I don't anticipate him doing that either, though it would be pretty, pretty sweet. Speaking of wide receivers, here's a uh, here's a pop candidate take. If you want me to talk about uh, a player's individual season or whether or not he could be a pop candidate, somebody who was on last year's team that is going to have a better statistical year in 2024, let me know. I'm curious. I've talked about several in the past, but always happy to go into new names. This one from Nathan. To me, the pop candidate is Tez. He's proven Troy is no longer around. He should be due for a plus 700 yard gain if he clicks with Gabriel. Pfft. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Can I rank this on the hotness meter? I don't mean like attractiveness. I'm just saying one being ice cold freezing take. This is ridiculous. 10 being scorching hot at the other end and five being down the line, measured, even, and practical. Or, you know, Vulcan, you could say. Live long and prosper. Just be logical. Uh, no, this is th- this would be a 10. That would result in Tez Johnson pushing for 1,900 yards receiving. Remember, Troy Franklin just set the record at over 1,400 yards. A 700-yard gain? Look, even if Oregon, they played in a, Tez played in the bowl game last year, so he played in all 14 games. If Oregon were to have an extra playoff game or two because they're making a run, I still don't see plus 700 yards coming into play. I, I, I mean, he was really good last year. He's going to be really good again. But man, yeah, 700, 1,182 yards last year. Over 1,800, almost 1,900 yards? No, I I don't think Tez is a pop candidate. I think he's one of those important returners that Oregon's offense needs and that the team needs from a leadership standpoint to reach their full potential. But that is as hot of a pop candidate take as I have seen. Like one I did recently was Tatum Tuioti will have 10 plus combined tackles for loss and sacks. I can see that. I think it goes just under, but I can see him doing that. Tez with a plus 700? No. That would be, I mean, it'd be awesome. I don't think that that's, I don't think that's, uh, that's going to happen. Send me your predictions. If you want one evaluated on the show, I'm all about that stuff right now. I'm also all about the Big Ten style of play and how Oregon fits into that, because I think they fit into it very well. And we've got ourselves a new basketball court. We're going to talk about that.